Hello, my name is Uli Bauer from Kusterhunter.com and I'd like to show you the setup where Garnelen Tom keeps his F1 shrimp. You're going to get many hints and tips, but please keep in mind that some of them might only work within this setup and work well. Let's start our tour. Tom started his tank with Akadama, grain size 1 to 2 mm, as a substrate three months ago. The water in the tank is pure reverse osmosis water, mineralized with bee shrimp mineral GH+, to a conductance value of 200 microsiemens. The active soil gives him the water parameters of GH4, KH0, pH 5.8. In the tank there is a sifting oxidator which produces pure active oxygen. The active oxygen cleans the water of nitrite and hydrocarbonates, the oxidative activity of the water is enhanced and thus the ground is prevented from decaying as the oxygen is dissolved in the water and thus reaches every part of the tank. Let's talk about filtration now. Tom uses an undergravel filter which he built himself and the Tetra Brilliant Super Filter. Both filters are air powered. They possess a great number of advantages. The Tetra Brilliant Super Filter has been designed for tanks up to a volume of 250 liters, so we have a very good filtration in this 54 liter tank. The filter has a big surface. If you feed pollen, for example, you get a big area covered with pollen on the filter sponge due to the suction where the little Taiwan bees can graze. You can also carry dirt out of the tank when you clean the filter sponge. If you use under gravel filters exclusively, this is impossible. However, we only clean the sponge when the water flow is significantly reduced. Now let's get to Tom's economical and efficient do-it-yourself under gravel filter. Fix the filter pipe with aquarium silicone. Around the water pipe and its inlet holes we fill zeolite, grain size 5 to 8 mm. Zeolite prevents the filter pipe holes from being blocked by little pieces of acadama. Furthermore, zeolite absorbs great amounts of organic nitrogen and, acting as ion exchanger, it can even retain highly toxic ammonia. Thus, we can say zeolite binds and filters poisons from the water. Moss is almost a must in a shrimp breeding tank because the little shrimplets always find food in it. Besides moss, you can also put caves and tubes in your tank, which act as hiding places for the little Taiwan bees. It's also very important to have leaves in your tank. In general, Tom uses dead brown leaves from beech, oak and catapa. It's important that the leaves have different decomposition stages. You should put a few leaves in the tank every two weeks. The leaves can stay there. They are decomposed by microorganisms, which are in turn great food for the little shrimps. Leaves may be fed generously. Let's talk about feeding the shrimps now. Young Taiwan bees are pretty stationary during their first few days. Thus, Tom likes to feed pollen. These tiny grains float in the tank, reaching every nook and cranny, and then settle on the sponge of the tetra filter, where they can easily be grazed off by the little ones. It's good to feed a small amount in the morning and another small amount in the evening. Moreover, the little shrimps love eating nettles. The leaves are boiled for a minute, rinsed with cold water and then put in the tank. The nettles contain a lot of calcium and magnesium, which the shrimps need for molting. Tom also feeds other foods like tetra wafer taps and nettle sticks, which he puts in the tank in different places. These feeding grounds are found by the shrimps when they start exploring the tank after a few days. Tom also has fusa snails in his tank because they eat the old food which is drifted off from the food place before it can get bad. Moreover, he thinks the Taiwan bees find food in the excrement of the snails, namely microorganisms.
mangrove wood and more wood are recommendable additions to a raising tank and form great places where microorganisms can settle, which in turn are eaten by the Taiwan bees. Before I come to an end now, I'd like to say something about changing water, because I think this is of utmost importance. As I said beforehand, some of these tips only make sense in the context of Tom's specific setup, and water changes are a part of that. He only changes very little water in our F1 tank here, just 2-3 to three liters every two weeks. In Tom's experience, most losses of Taiwan bee shrimplets are due to water changes, as the conductance value might differ or other parameters might not agree, and the little ones die due to problems with osmotic pressure. Young Taiwan bees need all their power for growing.